Mexico, they worked in Kenya, um, they worked, of course, uh, in the United States for President Trump, but also before that for Ted Cruz. I was on MSNBC, which is our, one of our big television networks in the United States, discussing Cambridge Analytica in February 2017, right after the election, and I literally saw the hosts have their jaw drop in front of me. They were like, oh. And one person at the table was not surprised at all, and it was Ted Cruz's campaign manager. And so I want to tell you a little bit about Analytica. It's built upon research that shows that you can gather data from people, and you can buy data about people, not just on Facebook, it's not just about Facebook, but you can gather and purchase data about people in ways that are far more telling, right? So it's one thing to understand me based on who I present myself to be on Facebook, but trust me, that's not the real me. Right? How many of you think that the authentic you is how you Instagram yourself? It's part of you, right? It's part of you, but it's not all of you. But what if I was able to purchase all your credit card data every time you went to OXO, right? And know what you're buying, when you're buying it, and correlate that data with your Facebook data, right? That allows us to take disaggregated data forms, meaning they're disconnected in our lives, and reconnect them to build models of psychological and personal identity. And what Analytica did, which I think is very interesting and potentially provocative, which is why it became a global story, is they weren't just using these data models to access individuals in specific ways. David Axelrod, who's the kind of main digital strategist, and, and he's a CNN anchor, um, behind President Obama, was a master of doing this. I interviewed him for my new book, and he told me that what they were doing was very different than what Analytica did. And the reason why, is it was gathering data, not just to identify you, 40-year-old Indian American man who went to these schools, but it's also identifying your psychological identity. This is what we call psychometrics, right? So, it's that he's, not that he's 40 years old and Indian, Indian American, it's 40 years old, he's Indian, and he's neurotic at these times of the day, in relation to his wife, maybe, and open-minded when he's with new people, like all of you, and anxious at these other times, so there are much more subtle ways of understanding one's identity. Do you understand that? So that means if I understand that about someone, I can provide them with advertisements, or what we call sponsored news stories, which is kind of similar to what we say when we say the term fake news, a little bit different, that is based on targeting you, based on who you are psychologically, right? Demographically and psychologically. So I can make you not want to vote if you're a Hillary Clinton supporter, right? I can make you, as a Bernie Sanders supporter, think that Trump might be better than Hillary Clinton. Not by saying that, but by, but by recommending you content that's designed to influence your, your, your outcome, your, your actual behavior after the fact. And this all built on provocative research, well, you get right there, uh, of my colleague and friend, Michal Kozinski, he was a professor at Stanford and has become quite famous because he developed the underlying algorithms that Cambridge Analytica ended up using. And this guy's a good friend of mine, but he's very much a provocateur. And he says things like, I can understand you better than your spouse with 300 Facebook likes, right? Forget the credit card data, which I think is way more important. I can understand you and make predictions about you more than any of your friends with 10 Facebook likes. 70 more than a friend, 150 more than a family member. So this is one way we can use data and technology in relation to political campaigns and elections, which obviously in some sense seems to be problematic with principles of an open democracy, right? Or even classical principles that have been embedded here in Mexico of free speech, of public speech, of public discourse, of open dialogue, of people having power over their own voices in the context of democratic organized. But I do want to say that this is not the only way in which technology can or will or is being used for campaigns. We see a pattern in the United States, you might find this interesting, of many candidates, including one in, in Texas right now named Beto O'Rourke, very important election because it's the border. He's, the, he's from El Paso, Texas, next to Juarez, that are not taking any money from political action committees no big private money, 
and that are raising all their money, and you've guessed it, online. I gave 20 bucks to this guy, I gave 50 bucks to that guy. And it's not just candidates from the left, it's also candidates from the right, that's happening. And I think that's really important because that's another way in which we can think about the internet. Taking us all from being apart to bringing us together. And the reason I want to show this image, because I think it's really like, cute, is there's someone or somebody or something in this image that's not what you would predict. This is the candidate Bernie Sanders. But do you see that little bird there? It's on the podium. So this went, this happened live when, when uh, Bernie Sanders was giving a, a, a talk during the political campaign. This bird showed up on the podium and instantly it became the viral trending topic all over social media. And why is that? It's because there was a photographer right there, there was a Twitter kind of team right there, and they took this little micro event and they made it a macro meme, right? Another one that was very, was very popular in the United States was Obama Girl. I don't know if you remember this. <laughs> in 2008, right? These videos go viral, and that's the really powerful and beautiful thing about the internet is in theory, and it happens sometimes, you know, I could just be a random guy, and I put something online, and if I'm smart enough about it, it can become a meme, it can become viral. So there is this possibility for mobility that exists with the internet. Okay, so I've talked about data, AI, political systems very briefly. My book is touching on all of this. It's gonna be a mainstream book. I've been speaking to folks in Congress, Elizabeth Warren,